Hello, in this video tutorial you'll learn about tuples in Python. I'll start out by telling you what tuples are, followed by demonstrating multiple assignment, then tuple unpacking, and I will close with showing you named tuples. Let's start the IPython 3 shell. Tuples compare to lists. They are essentially the same but immutable. So I define a tuple here now and instead of a square bracket I use normal parentheses. Add a few values to this tuple and can have a look at the tuple. Tuples support adding other tuples, so I can add here a new tuple to it. This works even on immutable tuples because it does not change the tuple t. It creates a new tuple which consists of the values in t and the values in this tuple here. Let's have a look and t is still the same. I can multiply a tuple by for example 3 to create a new tuple with three times the elements of the original tuple consecutively. So we have the original elements once, twice and three times. We can uh, perform indexing, so get the element number two here. We can access the last or second last in this case element, the last element. We can do slicing with a tuple that means uh, give me everything until not including uh, the fourth element, so elements one, two, three, or give me everything from including the first, uh, the element after the index one, that would be element four, and going up to and not including the element after index three, or at index three. So we get four and one. Because tuples are immutable, we cannot say t1 equals 3 because we cannot change an existing tuple inside. This will fail, and because of they are immutable, there are less functions available. We cannot uh, append to a tuple, extend the tuple, we cannot sort the tuple in place. We can only count how many times an element occurs in a tuple and look for where an element occurs first in a tuple to get the position. If we still need to sort a tuple, we can use the sorted function, which will take the tuple and create a list out of the elements in the tuple, which is then sorted. So it does not modify the tuple. T stays what it was before, but we can still use sorted if we want to get the elements sorted. Now there are different names for a tuple. If there are only two members in a tuple, it's referred to as a pair. If there are three members, it's referred to as a triple. And if it's having four members, it's referred to as a quadruple. And I will create the quadruple by adding a tuple with only one value to it. A tuple with only one value cannot be written directly with parentheses around the value because this would evaluate to the integer 2 and not a tuple with one value. To indicate that this is a tuple I have to add the comma to say this is explicitly a tuple with only one value and get my quadruple here. Now have a, let's have a look at multiple assignment. Say we have a variable, a string variable containing a name and a score of a sports person. And you already know the, the split function of strings, so saying split split this string at the comma, and this returns uh, two elements at once. And we can, by multiple assignment, catch both of them. So I can say name, comma, score equals result.split. So there is one value, and here is another value. The first goes into name, and the second into score name and score. And we can use this Pythonic technique to return multiple values from our own functions. So here let's have a look at this function. It's a function called read result. It expects a string and this string is split up into a name and a score. And now we return more than one variable simply by saying return first variable comma and then the second variable. In this case already converted to an integer. We can try this out. We can, as before, say t is read result of result to get 
all the values inside a inside a single tuple. So the tuple T has Cho and the number 117. But I can also say name comma score is read result of result and get the results split up in separate variables. If we want to do multiple assignment, we have to be careful to, to have the right number of variables on the left hand side. So if I have a function that does nothing but return three variables or three values, I can either say t is the result of f and get everything inside of a tuple. Here it is. Or I can say a, b, c is the result of f. So this goes into the first variable, this in the second, and this in the third, just as expected. But the one thing I cannot do is to, to provide the wrong number of variables. I cannot say a, comma b equals f. This will fail because I can either have a tuple returned or, in this case, three values. Now let's move on to tuple unpacking. When we define a, a function that expects a number of parameters, let's say x, y, and c, and just for demonstration purposes, this function does nothing but prints out its parameters, x, y, and c, and we use the format function that we've seen before, x, y, and c. Just to demonstrate the function, I'll call it with these values here, x, y, and c. And uh, if I have a tuple that has these values, 1, 2, 4, I can use the values of the tuple inside the function call. However, I cannot use them directly. If I do f of t, the tuple t will go into x, and y and c will stay undefined, which doesn't work. So here we get an error because we're missing two parameters. If I want to use the values inside t, I have to call the function with a star in front of t, which means unpack the values inside the tuple and use each value as one parameter. This will be the first parameter, this is the second parameter, and this is the third parameter. And the result is the function gets called and everything works as expected. Finally, let's have a look at named tuples, because tuples are just like lists, so we have to memorize which value is which. Is this x, is this x, or is this x, which one is uh, y, which one is c? Unless there's an easy to memorize convention, it's good that we can name them. In order to do so, we import from the collections module the named tuple. Import named tuple. From collections, import named tuple. And I will define a point which is a named tuple going by the name point that has the fields x, y, and c. And I can use it, p1, to define multiple points now, not multiple named tuples. Let's say my first one is 3, 5, 1. Or I can define them slightly different by saying point x equals 4, y equals 1, and c equals 23. Both are named tuples. This is p1, this is p2, and here the, the default string output is already much easier to read. We see which value corresponds to which name, and we can access the values either way we want. So we can say p1 at position 0 or p2 at position 0, but likewise we can say p1.x or p2.x to get the, the values stored at the name x and y, which is sometimes a lot easier and avoids confusions and therefore bugs. In this video tutorial, I've told you a little bit about what tuples are, about multiple assignment, that means getting more than one return value of a function immediately into more than one variable. I've told you about tuple unpacking, that means having 
having the members of a tuple used as the parameters to a function and we closed by discussing named tuples. I hope you have picked up some new techniques that will be useful for your programming. Bye.